Welcome to Donuts Design and Debate, the podcast where we ask the question, is this good design? And you, the audience, help us decide if it is or is not based on the number of coveted donuts a topic receives. This week, we're going to be talking about skeuomorphism with our special guest, art director, Mike Keeway. All right, so here's the thing. I didn't know what the term skeuomorphism meant, and I'm not the only one. We actually uh, had had the both, I, I don't want to ruin this for you, but uh, Matt didn't know either, and he's a pretty smart guy. So we went and looked it up, and it's a pretty common uh, concept. If you look it up, you'll get something like the, the definition in the dictionary, is something like, uh, it refers more to design aspects of previous iterations of an item than how it is used, or something like that. The general idea of skeuomorphism is to take a thing that's a physical thing and use it to represent maybe an action or something that has to get done. This is a concept that comes up a lot in things like icon design. Uh, if I want to make an app that does a thing, what is a, a small symbol or image that can fully represent what the app does that I can put on the screen, you know, make it an icon so somebody can tap it. The term skeuomorph is actually a combination of a couple of Greek, Greek words, skeo and morphe, which means, basically when you put them together, it means to contain a shape. The term skeuomorph was actually coined way back in 1890, which blew my mind that uh, we're thinking about icons for phones that long ago, but apparently uh, this guy Henry Colley March was when he uh, wrote an article, The Meaning of Ornament, or It's Archaeology, Archaeology and Physiology. Uh, no, I, I slaughtered that. The meaning of ornament, or its archaeology and psychology. That was the name of the article written by Henry March. Um, over the last several years, and we, this, this term has gotten a little bit, you know, uh, co-opted by the process, specifically in UX or UI design, uh, where we go in and try to represent what something's going to do. If you guys have ever been involved with something like icon design, it's not an easy task. It's not easy to boil down something that a command does or a program does uh, from, you know, several sentences or multiple clicks or processes down to, you know, a 32 by 32 pixel icon. This idea of skeuomorphism has, has changed to refer to the mimicking of real world items in the digital counterpart. So, this exa examples of these are things like uh, the trash can. When you want to get rid of a file, you click, click, put it in the trash can. You want to save, you click on the disk icon. Nobody knows what an actual floppy disk looks like anymore, other than that reference to the icon that we see on the screen. Earlier today, we were talking to our intern, Nick, and I asked him if he had ever used like a rotary phone, you know, the thing where it's got the cord on it and you hold it like this and there's a mouthpiece and a piece for your ear. He said no, he hadn't, but he knew what it was because of the little icon you see on your phone when you go to make a call or to hang up or something like that because we use that icon and that icon, now the image of that is actually more well known at this point than the actual thing that it meant originally. And that is skeuomorphism. And to debate this today, we have two very smart people who are gonna come on and tell you why skeuomorphism is or is not good design. So we're bringing Mike Heway and Matt Robison to the stage. Awesome. Thank you guys for, uh, for, for sitting still through that. I, I apologize that it did take a take or two. That's not normal. You, That's not how it usually no goes. Problem. No, it was great. Uh, Beautiful intro and welcome, Mike. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, thanks. Nice welcome, to be here. Mike. So uh, my, old, I my old coworkers. That's right. I was just gonna say that's that. Yeah. Full we, we, were, we were both Matt and I were lucky enough to actually work with Mike. He actually was part of the Trimble team uh, up until just a few years ago. So, so it's not a conflict of interest anymore. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> and he can be mean to to Matt as much as he wants. It's not an HR issue. So exactly. <laughs> Perfect way to do it. Free to free to beat me up. So, so your title, Mike, is art director. Can you tell us a little bit about what an art director is and what you're responsible for? 
Yeah, so um, I manage a design team for another tech company uh, at the moment, and uh, I basically run all things design. So um, I own a marketing website, um, you know, the design system behind that, and then, of course, like all the branding and, and that sort of stuff. So uh, the idea of skeuomorphism and icons and iconography um, imagery representing an idea is uh, what I deal with day in and day out. Oh, great. So, so you've, you, you have heard of this term before Matt and I had. Uh, that might be safe to say, but I, I also, um, to be fair, am, uh, I guess of the three of us, I am the professional designer on, at the table. So sure. I'll, we'll give Good you reason. that in your defense. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because, uh, I mean, I, I so my experience has always been in software and, and I have done some UI design work and I have, you know, I've seen this before. I didn't know the term for it, but I, I knew that it was a thing. Um, but it was interesting because we, we've we been doing, so this is our 18th show of DD&D and we actually had one other designer who suggested this topic as well. So it was on a list of, of ideas and we ended up doing something different with them. But I thought it was interesting that we had two separate people come up with this topic. And I mean, to me, that's like, well, then this shows money. This is gold right here because this is what all designers want to talk about. That's that's how I assumed that plays out. Well, for something so ubiquitous or like known in the design world, it's like, come on, can't you get a better name? <laughs> easier to pronounce, easier to like talk about. Does it have to be some like, you know, Greek word? Give me a break. How much is it easier to spell? I, I've misspelled it every <laughs> single time. Autocorrect is always like, did you mean to put an O in here? Like, yes, <laughs> exactly. Copy pasting a lot. That's what I've been doing. Yeah, there you go. That's the like the ASCII shrug. That's what I have to do. I don't know how to type it. I just copy it from somewhere else. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, uh, we know we're talking about. We know who's talking. Mike is actually the pro argument, so he's going to go first. I'm going to hop off the screen here and let these guys make faces at each other as they talk. But uh, yeah, take it away, Mike. Tell us why skeuomorphism is good design. All right. Sounds good. So uh, I take the pro stance because we come from a physical world and we have uh, experience using things, pens, telephones, um, microphones, speakers. Um, and when these ideas need to be represented in a digital environment, we have to have some frame of reference. And that frame of reference is the physical thing that we're speaking about. So Aaron was talking about having to hook up microphones and everything this morning. And I'm looking in my toolbar Well, in a minute ago, uh, it's now changed to uh, the video camera uh, symbol. But a minute ago, it was the microphone symbol. And so inherently, I knew from that design that um, this was my, you know, my audio, my microphone settings. Right? So in order for us to really understand what we're interfacing with in a flat pixel environment, I do support skeuomorphism. All right. All right. Matt, tell, tell us why you are opposed. Why do you think skeuomorphism is not good design? Bold, I like it, folks. He's keeping the uh, keeping the details for later, Ch close to the vest. I'm a little scared over here about what he's got uh, in that hand of his. But um, yeah, I think so. Uh, I have a little more prepared. Uh, sit tight. The <laughs> so I think. Look, yes, we need some kind of frame of reference, and especially during the transition from physical to digital, before people had used computers before. This was a, uh, a necessary thing when we needed, uh, before people were familiar with the interactions and affordances, uh, which was a great term that I learned in doing my research here, uh, Mike nodding in approval of my beautiful design term affordances, um, in a digital and touch media. So I think in this transition to new technologies, sure, it's necessary. It's, you know, it's a necessary evil. It's like, um, uh, like war you know, necessary evil or uh, AutoCAD. Um, but now yeah, we're free of the shackles of the past and we can look forward to, um, to pure designs that don't have to have any kind of uh, physical, you know, 
They're not um, not connected to anything in the physical world. You know, when people talk about, oh, how great skeuomorphism is, like skeuomorphism, whatever it is. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, it's so Apple. Apple does it so well. You know, the, oh, the iOS, all this. People don't talk about Windows Vista. You know, people don't talk about Winamp skins, okay? People don't talk, like, original paint programs, you know, instead of having, like, a color picker, they had, like, pixelized representations of, like, a tube of paint. And it's like, look, we don't need that anymore. We know that there's a better design out there, and um, we've moved past it. You know, Apple is so intuitive. A lot of the stuff that I looked up uh, about skeuomorphism and Apple referenced the iBooks application. I don't know if you guys have, it looks like a bookshelf. And it seems to me like this is a joke being played on, on, on the account of the user. It's like, I don't know where my books are going to be in the books app if they're not on a bookshelf. It's like, look, folks, we don't need that. Just show us the, the, you know, the front of the book and let us read it. Um, I think this kind of design is bad for responsive. It's hard to uh, design and to scale down, you know, things that have extra ornament or pixelation representing real things on like a watch, for instance, like a, you know, a, a electronic watch. Um, I feel like I'm taking up all the time, so I'm trying to skip over some, some stuff here. <laughs> um, Okay, so these designs are slower to iterate because they take more work to design. And I think design needs to evolve. You know, evolution, uh, people talk about Darwin, people talk about survival of the fittest, and really it's about survival of the fit enough to reproduce. And if you think about a design idea as being a good enough fit in order to move on to the next iteration of a particular design, that's you know, fit enough, it's good enough. I think designers have been lazy and these days good enough is not good enough anymore. Uh, design should strive to innovate and disrupt. And frankly, this is unintelligent design. I think skeuomorphism is the repulsive vestigial tail of design. And um, like wisdom teeth, some big these... words there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, oh, I'm bringing it. Um, like wisdom teeth, these these things don't have any use anymore. And if you leave them there long enough, these skeuomorphism designs are going to start to impact on you. And they're going to just cause more and more pain. And folks, I think, look, you're good designers out there. I think you can do better than just taking the look or the operability of an existent thing in real life and just porting it over to a digital version. I think you should take the the feeling that you get when you're interacting with that and then try to represent that in the design. Um, don't be lazy. Don't be skeuomorphism is bad design. Thank you for listening. All right. Uh, so before we get into voting, I want I, I want to give you guys an opportunity to uh, respond. Mike, any any thoughts uh, about maybe how Matt said designers are lazy or any any, any specific things you wanted to touch on? I mean, I've known a few lazy designers in my day, so uh, I'm not okay. going to defend that point. But um, Vote for me. <laughs> I, I will say, so uh, I hear your point about like vestigial organs and like these things, relics of the past, et cetera. But um, from kind of a cultural and like language standpoint, we uh, design is a visual language, right? And we have to be able to communicate ideas based on empathy and our, uh, our target audience's understanding of the world around them. So uh, the idea of a phone, right? When uh, the phone icon, and maybe it looks like a physical um, uh, handset or you know, that, the, uh, the piece that you would hold up to your head. Sure. Um, I think there's a time and a place for that. And that time and a place may, it may be evolving and changing a little bit, but um, at the same time, a rectangle, right? is not necessarily a solid representation of a phone either. Um, so we look at these icons and it's like, here's your, your iPhone icon and it's just like a little, a little rectangle. Like, what is that? So I'm of the stance that we actually need to be a little bit flexible here. Um, I think that the skeuomorphic design where we are referencing real world objects so that people know that oh, I'm going to answer the phone or I'm going to click into the phone app. It has a real world 
physical object that we all understand culturally what that 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 image means right um or again coming back to the microphone most of us understand what a physical condenser microphone looks like the microphones exactly right <laughs> thank you for there it uh, is yeah audio only listeners yeah. i showed my microphone yeah um whereas you know the 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 microphones in an iphone are i think the ribbon microphones right so they look totally different they're funny little um, like squiggly things um and so trying to represent what your microphone controls are how do you do that appropriately without having kind of a real world context or some sort of language that you can fall back on so a user knows what they're clicking into i think look we live in a digital world forget the physical people know what their what things are they know what tiles are they know how to click on a screen you know we don't need some kind of glossy button that's like hey you can click this like people know how to interact with it um and i think there's just ha maybe there just hasn't been a good enough way to represent a phone that we just you have to use the old one over and over because you know nobody's been innovative and uh creative enough to come up with a more identifiable you know archetypal silhouette or whatever um so that's what I think. Look, try harder. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. Have, yeah, that's have you I tried designing something that doesn't look like a phone? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's, it's hard. What do you like a mouth and an ear? I don't know how you like try to convey. Anyhow, that's not for but us then, to figure out. You're still, you're still coming back to a skeuomorphic representation. That's you're right. representing a mouth and you're representing an ear. So the thing that does the talking and the thing that does the listening. Maybe so he is. I'm not. Oh, Just write phone. <laughs> Everything text. No, but and, see, there and, you got the problem in localization. That's 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 where icons come into play. Sorry, that's my big thing. Anyhow, you guys hmm. have both made some compelling points, some some great arguments, but but it's time to get real. This is where we're going to open it up to our audience. We are going to walk through our five principles of design, and we're going to let our audience vote on every single one to decide if skeuomorphism is good or bad design. So just to review before we hop into it, our five principles of design, the five donuts principles of designs are, is this design useful? Does this design have aesthetic appeal? Is this design simple? Is this design environmentally friendly? And does this design feel honest? So we're going to walk through these once at a time. If you're joining us live, we'll have the opportunity to vote in the poll down below. And if you're not joining us live, you should come back next time, next week, and help us vote on the next well, topic. Two weeks, right? Bi-weekly? Well, this will be released next week. Actually, this could be oh, okay. any time gotcha. in the future. So join us a week. Sometimes. <laughs> join us during a live recording <laughs> session. <laughs> we'll put the link in the in the show notes for uh, you where go. you can sign up for future shows. Sorry. I just it's a podcast, so time doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's a flat circle anyway. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so with that, let's let's hop right in. The first point we're going to vote on is, is skeuomorphism useful? Mike, you're going to go ahead and take this one first. Uh, listeners, listen to what he has to say, and then cast your vote. So is it useful? I would argue that it is because we are creating a, uh, don't shake your head at me, young man, <laughs> uh, because <laughs> we are creating a, you know, a, a visual language. And in order to communicate, unless you were, um, uh, unless you're communicating via the written language and strictly the written language, we, we need a way to have, have a common understanding. So is skeuomorphism useful? Yes, because it uses uh what are you know culturally relevant symbols um that we are familiar with within um you know a certain time frame uh the uh the old save icon is one example of skeuomorphic design that i actually wouldn't support because the floppy disk is not it's no longer relevant right at least in this this decade um but you know, the handheld phone is an image that uh, I think still resonates and a lot of people still inherently understand, even though I was just reading an article the other day that I think New York City um, uninstalled its last uh, pay, pay phone uh, uh, you know, throughout the city or something, right? So, so maybe in a decade, there needs to be a change uh, of what that phone icon is. But for now, I think some of these are still relevant and still useful. All right, Matt, 
No, Why? obsolete. All right. <laughs> Sorry, just jumping all over you. He's ready. He's ready to go. Matt's ready to go. <laughs> no, these are obsolete. Look, this is, uh, like you said, this is outdated. People are, who are born don't know what a floppy disk is. They're not going to know what a handset is. It doesn't matter. Look, maybe this was useful when people didn't know what a double click was. Or like they didn't know that you could swipe on a touch screen. Now people know that. It's outlived its uh, usefulness. And hey, look, I'll point you to this Swedish study from 2021. They did a, a, a study uh, between flat and skeuomorphic icons in kids aged seven to nine years old. They found that there was no significant difference in recognition and usability, usefulness, of the skeuomorphic designs versus the flat ones. The thing that they did find, however, was that children preferred the look the skeuomorphic ones. They're childish folks. They're only useful as toys and they're not useful as icons. Thank you. Can I have a counterpoint to that though? Um, just as a moment of, of clarification, um, I'd be very curious to understand what the, the flat icon versus the skeuomorphic icon, what the differentiation was in that study. Um, I think if we're discussing the idea of taking the semblance of the physical object, right? Like this thing resembles a physical object versus, um, uh, you know, adding color and beveling and all these like intricate details. I think those there's two two different arguments here that uh, one might be able to have. You're talking semantics, well, Hayway. Come on. Yes, well, exactly. I was going to say <laughs> it, it doesn't even matter because uh, the votes have been counted, they've been tallied, and this is a runaway yes. Geomorphism is useful. Yes. One donut awarded to Brett. <laughs> Cha ching All right. Moving forward, let's head over to our second principle. Does skeuomorphism have aesthetic appeal? Matt, you get to argue first. Tell us why it doesn't. So my, my last point sort of bled into this one. I know I was leading into the aesthetics here. Look, these are childish, okay? They are... They, if, if any adults like these, it's ironic, like some kind of nostalgic kitsch uh, love of, you know, oh, when I was a young kid and I used to, uh, you know, play on some computer that had brushed aluminum on all the UIs. Like, look, you don't need this anymore. Like Mike said, OK, me, like I think skeuomorphism should be different than like a visual metaphor. Like I think those are maybe not uh, one and the same. Uh, so I think that this kind of, you know, representation is different. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about skeuomorphism. So uh, anti-aesthetic, non-aesthetic, no. All right, Mike. Will you repeat the question? Does skeuomorphism have aesthetic appeal? Does it look good? Aesthetic appeal. I would argue that there's a difference between aesthetics and function. So... Having aesthetic appeal, do they have aesthetic appeal? Is that um, is that relevant? Um, you know, you might not have to like what it looks like, but you have to understand what its function is. So again, we'll come back to the microphone, right? Do I need to have? Like, you can make an argument that the aesthetic, like aluminum detailing on on the microphone with a little like glowing dot. Um, you know, that might look like trash, but you also might be able to design a really nice looking one that's like modern and flat and clean, but still represents the idea um, versus something that's maybe strictly functional that is reduced down to its its elements that still represent the, uh, the real world object. Um, in that case, I think the aesthetics are important. I, th I think of a skeuomorphism aesthetics like, you know, stitched leather on a UI or like, you know, a notes app that looks like an actual notepad with like, right. you know, the, so. The binding. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that uh, I, I have a harder time arguing that. I'll be, I'll be frank. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, I, you know, yeah, go ahead. You're, uh, you, you did a good job arguing against yourself, Mike, because they took your yeah. donut away. And uh, <laughs> I, I've never seen a friendlier, like, cooperative. You guys helped, like, I feel like you developed your argument together. And <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we better split call. these donuts. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> All right. Uh, moving forward. This one's for you, Mike. Is skeuomorphism simple? I think inherently it is. Um because you're relying on dominant um, uh, dominant visual cues or dominant like cultural understandings of, of objects. 
So the actual details of designing the icon, what color and size and proportion is not simple, but the concept itself of um, pulling from, you know, the notepad with the pen, um, conceptually that is simple. Um, there's, there's detail in execution, but, um, you know, from a basic, you know, functional standpoint, it's simple. The, uh, one of the big cheerleaders of skeuomorphism, uh, as we all know, Steve Jobs, he, I mentioned the leather stitching earlier. He said that the, the leather stitching that was on, uh, I think the calendar app was just straight up pulled from his, uh, Gulfstream jet. And uh, the people who worked on the UI said it was impossibly hard because he wanted exactly the same. This look is very complex. The whole thing adds an extra higher cognitive load to somebody who's trying to look and figure out what it is in order to move forward. Um, and I think that uh, these visual embellishments are complex, which is not simple. So no is the answer to this one. Thank you. Well, not according to the audience, because the audience yes. came back and said yes. Yes, skeuomorphism Ooh. does get a donut for simple. All so right, two like left. Stanley, this, Stanley Cup finals here, man. It's getting tense. This, this is <laughs> still three, anyone's game. I mean, this this we do have five, ties. Right? <laughs> Going to so, go to a game seven over here. On occasion, we do tie, but uh, we still have two points left, so we, we could still have a winner. Okay. And and truly, the winner is everybody who's part of this podcast. Let's we're all just winners. Let's let's just make sure we keep that straight. Good point. Good point. We'll see. All right. <laughs> Point number four is skeuomorphism environmentally friendly. Matt. So I think inherently skeuomorphism looks back to the past, what has come before. And I think in order to see a sustainable future, you need to be looking forward and not back. I think once you get in that mindset of, you know, re referencing how things were done in the past, it can stunt your creative thinking to uh, come up with creative ways to solve problems. Um, and like, for example, when you charge an electric car, why does the, the plug-in have to look like a gas pump? This is just, that's skeuomorphism. There's no reason to do that. There could be a much better way to charge electric cars or much better ways to do things environmentally going forward. But unfortunately, skeuomorphism is dragging us down to the horrible past. All right. Ooh. Mike, what do you got on this? How do I argue an idea of a digital representation of something being environmentally friendly? Well, hopefully it reduces the number of actual physical objects we need. And so um, I think you would have to do some, some math here and some calculations, but I would imagine uh, the, 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 uh, the electrical requirement to uh, have you know, some server farm somewhere is uh, to store one little note, right? The, the, to power the, the hard drives that you know, hold the, the pixels would be um, a lower carbon uh, footprint than, uh, say, for example, the physical object and the manufacturer of the paper and the leather of the actual object itself. So I'm completely stretching a very strange argument for a very strange, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, question here on, on on a subject that I'm not sure it entirely aligns. But I would say, if we remove more physical objects from the world and have them be a little bit more ethereal. Um, we are making an environmental difference. Environmental donut is always a tough one, but uh, yeah. you know we're always about we're all about sustainability here on DD and D, so uh, it stays in. <laughs> well, I I, th I think uh, the server farms beat out the electric cars because uh, Mike's Mike's argument took it, and we are at three out of five donuts. Sheesh! All right, one point left. This is this is the big one. This is this one. I, for me, is split down the middle because I, I want to hear, hear some some good arguments here. Mike's going to argue first. Is skeuomorphism honest? I think inherently it has to be, because you're representing again this physical object, and so we all have an understanding of what um, a pencil looks like. And when you represent that object digitally, if you are not honest about what that representation is, 
you break the visual connection to the physical object and therefore your imagery doesn't work. Um, so I think inherently it has to be, it has to be honest. Otherwise, uh, it, it doesn't, it simply doesn't work. Wrong. It's inherently dishonest <laughs> <laughs> because it's trying to be something it's not. It's literally in its, what it's doing. It's saying, okay, this is what it isn't. It's trying to be something else. It, it tricks people into thinking they know how to use something when they don't yet. That's dishonesty. I'm going to make Done. a surrealist reply here. We all know Magritte, right? Sister Pan Peep, right? This is not a pipe, and it's a painting of a pipe, but it is the representation of the pipe that is what's important. So we understand it to be the pipe, even though it is physically not a pipe. And I think, uh, I think in order to have that communication, you you and, and that understanding, you, it has to be like an honest reflection of the object itself. Yeah, but think? if you've never used, if you've never like, yeah, you don't use a representation of a pipe the same way you would use a real pipe. So it's saying, oh, it's tricking you into thinking, you know, you could use this as a pipe, but you can't. We'll, well see what the audience has to say. They Dang have you, voted, and alas, <laughs> that is one more donut. Alas for Matt. So skeuomorphism, by order of the votes of our audience, gets four out of five donuts. Making it <laughs> well argued, Mike. Thank you. Bring your camera back up Good here. Good job. Right? I I was afraid you had all these uh, notes. I thought I was going to get slaughtered. I, that was that was some some good. I, I'm just going to say there's some good points on both sides. I I yes. uh, learned some things. I I made some notes uh, about some things that probably won't do anything other than sit on that piece of paper. But I did write them down, so that's something. We got that. Uh, so we hope you in the audience did the same. Uh, crumple up that note and throw it out. Unless it's on a virtual notepad that looks like a real one. In that case, <laughs> throw it in the virtual garbage can. That's right. Awesome. Well, before we head out, Mike, is there uh, anything in particular, any any place that uh, people like what you had to say, want to learn more about what you do or who you are? Is there a place they can do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're welcome to find me on, um, I guess the most popular one is Instagram. Um, my handle is Kenshikuka, which is Japanese for architect. Um, uh, and it's got the underscore at the end. So K E N Kenshi C H I K U K A underscore. It's a bit of a bit of a mouthful. Um, or you can find me on Visco too, which is kind of more of a, like a real photography app for you know less adverts and, and such. So there we go. That's it right awesome. there. Great. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us. Thanks for putting Matt in his place. He's been getting really uppity lately. I appreciate it. Hey, it's time. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And thank you all for listening to us. And uh, hopefully we will see you in a live recording if you're watching. If you are here this week, I hope you come back next time. And uh, you all have a great time between now and then. Thank you very much. Thanks. This has been a Trimble Media production. Thanks for listening to Donuts, Design, and Debate. If you know a designer you think would like this show, please share it with them. And don't forget to take a moment to give us a rating on your podcast app. It really helps us out. Thanks again for tuning in, and take care.